So we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon, everyone. You're all very welcome here to Holy Cross as we come to pray for the happy repose of the soul of Mary Ellen Cavill. We pray for her as she continues on her journey to eternal life. We also pray for all her loved ones, all those who are gathered here. We pray especially for her children who sung so beautifully there as we welcome home Mary Ellen. We pray for Jamie, for Julika, for Elizabeth, Martina and Jolene, for her sons-in-law Richie, Steve, Sean and Paddy, daughter-in-law Alice, her grandchildren Katie, James, Lily, Evie, John, Elena and Glenda, her childhood friend Margaret, nieces, nephews, neighbours and friends and all who are gathered here who are mourning her loss. I invite you to take your seats for a moment as we have some symbolic items that will come and bring forward, her grandchildren will come bring forward and place here on the table. And Alice will lead us in the meaning of these symbols. The RTE guide symbolises the important weekly purchases. She would choose her daily programmes and let us know if there was a good film on a Friday night. The boat symbolises Mary Ellen's love of skull, where she was born, and the sea where her father and brother spent many hours as fishermen. The scratch card symbolises the three euro bingo card, which was her favourite choice. Granny always told Lily that if she ever won big, she'd buy her a horse. The cappuccino symbolises Granny's favourite drink, unsweetened, extra hot, filled to the top and no chocolate. She knew what she liked. The wooden spoon symbolises the multifunctional utensil that was used for baking, cooking, stirring the whites, but if you heard the rattle of the drawer, it was time to run before the wooden spoon came out. Every time I say a wooden spoon, I run away too. <laughs> of an old Irish mother. And the last symbol now that we place on Mary Ellen's coffin is the book of the Gospels. For we know that in life she cherished the Gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet her with the words contained within this book, the words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. So, dear brothers and sisters, we come together as members of God's family. With confidence we turn to him, for we know that he is full of gentleness and full of compassion, as we stand together and pray. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Mary Ellen, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. I invite you to take our seats as we listen to God's word, as Alice and Michelle now lead us in our readings. And there are some seats available over here at the other side of the church. If you wish to come, those standing at the back, come in the other door. There are some seats available. First reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the mourning veil that covers all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth. 
for the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. In the restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. Response. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, shepherd there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff, with those you give me comfort. Response. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, shepherd there, there is nothing I shall want. want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Response. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. Response. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of Paul, St. Paul to the Romans. When we were baptised in Christ Jesus, we were baptised in his death. In other words, when we were baptised, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's <coughs> glory, we too might live a new life. But we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having raised from the dead, will never die again. De death has no power over him anymore. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as we greet our gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. It was now about the sixth hour, and when the sun eclipsed, a darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. The veil of the temple was torn right down the middle, and when Jesus had cried out in a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. With these words, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he gave praise to God and said, This was a great and good man. And when all the people who had gathered for the spectacle saw what had happened, they went home beating their breasts. All his friends stood at a distance. So also did the women who had accompanied him from Galilee, and they saw all this happen. On the first day of the week, at the first sign of dawn, they went to the tomb with the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb, but on entering, discovered that the body of the Lord Jesus was not there. As they stood there, not knowing what to think, two men in brilliant clothes suddenly appeared at their side. Terrified, the women lowered their eyes, but the two men said to him, why look among the dead for someone who is alive? He is not here. He is risen. The Gospel of the Lord. At this time of year, during these days, houses and streets are busy putting up their Christmas decorations. Lights are twinkling in the darkness of the evenings, as the joy of Christmas is soon to come. But here in this church, a darkness has definitely fallen among us as we've come to mourn and to pray for the happy repose of the soul of Mary Ellen. The themes of darkness and light play a huge part of our faith. We love the light, for we are indeed children of the light. But darkness is always there. When I read in the gospel that we've just heard that a darkness had fallen over the land 
just before Jesus had died. I imagine Mary, whose feast we celebrate today with the Immaculate Conception, how dark her life must have been at that time. How she wished that she could have run up, taken her son's place and gone on the cross herself. I'm sure your mother would have done the same for you to take away your pain. And as I know mothers who are among us here today would do anything to take away the pain of their child. But yet, not all pain can be taken away from us. Sometimes we do experience pain. Sometimes, no matter how, how hard we pray or how much we wish, the pain does not leave us. And there is no pain greater than saying goodbye to a loved one, than saying goodbye to a mother, a mother-in-law, a grandmother and a friend. Someone who is so much part of your family for all life long. But yet that's exactly what we find ourselves here in this church doing, saying goodbye. But every time we gather for a requiem mass, we do three things. We gather, we give thanks, and we pray. And this gathering is no different. And gathering was something that was taken so much away from us over the last few years. I think something that we missed so much even the night before, to gather in the house of a loved one, to express sympathies, even if the words seem hollow, but just to hold the hand or to give the hope, to express in any way possible the sympathy that we are all feeling here today. Even at the rosary last night, to see the little dog coming in, expressing their own sympathy. I'm sure he loves the pets as well. But whatever way we can do, to express that sympathy in our gathering, to see such huge numbers here today and such huge numbers at the house last night as well. This was indeed a very cherished member of this community. We also give thanks. We give thanks for the life that Mary Ellen lived, beginning of course in her beloved Cork and Skull, but ending up here in a far better place in Rathaniska. <laughs> we give thanks for all the many years in between. We give thanks for her marriage, the gift of that marriage and for her children, for the, love, for, the, for the love that you experience at the hands of your mother. I'm sure the wooden spoon was only used for baking in that house. <laughs> but let us give thanks to a, to a treasured grandmother, to a treasured mother-in-law. It's not often we see sons-in-law who are grieving the loss of their mother-in-law so much. <laughs> But I know that she was so special to you and to give thanks for that as well. And of course, to Alice as well. But we also give thanks to God and our faith teaches us that death is not the end. That one day we will see Mary Ellen again and enjoy her friendship. But also, I hope we take hope and encouragement that Mary Ellen is indeed reunited with her husband, Martin, and her grandson, Dennis. We pray that that reunion in heaven will give us joy on this dark day. And the last thing we do is we pray. We pray, of course, for Mary Ellen as she continues on her journey, but we also pray for each other. We pray that all of us will one day be reunited again in the joys of God's kingdom. That there be no more pain, no more sorrow. It's all on this side as we experience this loss. May the prayers of all who are gathered here May the thanksgiving of you all fill this church so that the darkness will very much be overcome by the light. Eternal rest, grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. And so I invite forward now those who will lead us in our prayer of the faithful, Julie, Katie, Gary and Betty, as we stand together and pray. For I'm, for I'm 
Auntie Mary, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints. We pray to the Lord. Response. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the family and friends of Mary, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I think. <laughs> we pray for those who bear the cross of pain in mind and body, who never feel forsaken by God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all our deceased relatives and friends, especially Mary's husband, Martin, and her grandson, Dinny. May they have the reward of their goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we take a quiet moment as we place our own prayer for Mary Ellen before our loving Father. Lord, hear us. God, our Father, these are our prayers which we have placed before you this day for the happy repose of your servant, Mary Ellen. And we make them through the intercession of Our Lady in Heaven, whose feast we celebrate this day, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. We make these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. So I invite you to be seated as we continue with the prayers of our Mass, as I invite Margaret and Pauline now to bring forward the gifts of bread and wine. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands who will become our spiritual drink. We pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Mary Ellen, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Dennis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Mary Ellen, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly bodies after the pattern of his own glorious body. Remember her with all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And in all of Scripture, Jesus only ever taught us one prayer, and so we pray that prayer together as we stand and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, the power, power and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your and we offer to each other a sign of that peace. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Be
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only to say the word and my soul shall be healed.
and O Sacrament most holy, O Sacrament divine, O Sacrament most holy, O Sacrament divine, our praise and our thanksgiving be every moment thine, O Sacrament most holy, O Sacrament divine, our praise and our thanksgiving be every moment thine. Now will come forward to lead us in a communion reflection. In loving memory of Mum, there is nothing so special on this earth as a mother's undying love. It's as precious as an ocean pearl and pure as a snowy white dove. And although you are not here with me, no longer my earthly guide. I can feel your love and warmth forever here inside. I wish that we could have more time, that God had let you stay. Forever would not be long enough, but I would take just one day. Words cannot describe the loss I feel saying farewell to you, but heaven chose to give you wings and now it's time you flew. Mommy, I love you to the moon and back forever. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it our sister Mary Ellen may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass has ended. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Martina now will lead us in a few words on behalf of all the family. I'm really out of my comfort zone. It'll be so much easier to sing it. <laughs> Thank you all for being with us today to celebrate the life of a remarkable woman, our mother, Mary Ellen. The art of being a mother, one can only do their best and hope that one does it well. Our mother got an A plus in this. She was a caring, supportive and loving wife, mother, sister, grandmother and friend. She was extremely private and unassuming and always said of herself, I am just a housewife. And in her own sense of humour, gave herself the title of chief cook and bottle washer. <laughs> to us, she was so much more. She was a homemaker in the true sense of the word. Every room in our home had curtains which she made, walls she painted, matched perfectly with suitable decor, always complemented by daddy's handiwork and carpentry finishes. <coughs> Mommy was born in 1945 in the fishing village of Skull in West Cork. She was the only girl of five, yet she always said she should have been born a boy, as she was always labelled a tomboy, apart from her own dad, who always called her the queen. She would often tell stories of her childhood adventures, from swimming at the dog hole the skimming stone competi competitions, which she always won. She often spoke of her beloved pet, Jack the Donkey, and robbing apples from the orchard on their walk ho walks home from school, which also included a race to the neighbor's house to touch Jackie's lump on the roof. One story which depicts Mam's divilment was when she stole her brother's bike and headed down the steep hill from her home towards Skull Village. She cycled so hard to get away from her brother that she lost control and cycled over the side of the road down a 10 foot fall. She suffered a huge cut on her knee to which the scar was still visible today. She begged her brother not to tell on her and yes, the bike was mangled. <laughs> 
Mammy left school at 13 years old to work in her uncle Dan Griffin's pub. After a year, she, she braved moving to Cove and followed the path many young girls took at the time in hospitality. It was here she met her lifelong friend and our second mammy, who has now been promoted to mammy, Margaret. A friendship to be admired. It's not that diamonds are a girl's best friend, but it is best friends who are your diamonds. Mommy and Margaret moved from working in Cove to the Metropole Hotel in Cork City, followed by a move to Dublin where they worked in the Four Courts Hotel. This job hilariously did not last, <laughs> as Mommy got fired the day before the hurling all Ireland. <laughs> Mam cheekily put in an order for a roast beef dinner with all the trimmings, <laughs> and when it was served, she ran and hid with it to enjoy it herself. She got caught by her manager and was fired on the spot. Later that day, she was begged to go back to work because of the match the following day, but Mam's stubbornness, she refused and she enjoyed the day off. <laughs> the next stage of Mammy's life took her initially to Scotland and on then to London, where she met the love of her life, our Daddy Martin. They married in London in 1973, followed by Jalika's birth in 1975, and Jamie's birth in 1977. Yes, it's true. Julika and Jamie are English. <laughs> <laughs> Later in 1977, they decided to move home to Ireland as two did their adjoined friends, Margaret and Eugene. They moved all together to our now home in Kyle Valley and lived in a mobile home in Caravan until the now house was renovated by Daddy and Eugene. In 1979, 1980 and 1981, Elizabeth, myself and Jolene were born. This completed our family of five children. We have so many happy memories growing up, filled with so much love and strength. We always had the best of dinners and baked goods and we were always blessed with Mam's natural flair for cooking. Mammy stayed home whilst Daddy worked. She was a true carer, and this was always evident when any of us were sick. She was always on call and would have a little bell beside our beds for whoever was sick to be rang if we needed anything. We really took advantage. We rang the bell with orders of ice cream and anything we could get away with. Our summers and school holidays were always spent in West Cork and how she managed to pack for everyone and fit everything into the car, including Christmas presents, we will never know. Summers here in Kyle Valley were magical and full of adventures. Mam, she truly was a child at heart and was always happy to have our friends over, namely the Kellys next door, the Ramsbottoms, the Langtons, and so many more. One of our most memorable summers was when Mam hosted the weekly Kyle Valley Soccer Tournament. <laughs> Some weeks there could have been up to 20 players. Dad carved a wooden cup which was presented to the winning team weekly. And the best part was at half time, Mam served jam sandwiches, mugs of diluted orange and buns for everyone. She was the only adult looking after us all. No idea how she managed it. It still goes down as the best tournament in history. In 1985, Mam suffered a huge loss, losing her younger brother Michael tragically, a loss she never healed from. In 1997, she was blessed with an angel with the arrival of her grandson, Dennis. He brought such joy back into her heart. Mammy continued to love and support us all as we grew up and began to leave home. Yet we always came home for Christmas and anybody's birthdays. In 2001, she was diagnosed with breast cancer and underwent surgery and treatment until she got the all clear. 2016 brought the biggest pain and losses in losing our daddy Martin in September followed by the loss of her angel, Dennis, in December the same year. Since their passing, a light was switched off within her. Unfortunately, grief is the price we pay for love, 
and a bankrupt mammy. Mam leaves behind seven adored grandchildren. Katie, who is playing the music today, James, Lily, Evie, Elena, Glenda, and the Val Devil John. <laughs> I pray she will bless and guide them. As I pray she will guide them as their guiding light as she did for us in her time here on earth. Over the past week, we as a family have been touched so deeply by the outpouring of love for our mother. We genuinely could never have managed she had enriched the lives of so many. What echoed in all the messages and stories was Mam's empathy and ability to put everybody else's needs before her own. She always had a kind word for everybody. Finally, we as a complete family unit, including our partners, would like to offer our indelible thanks to everyone who messaged, called, visited, prayed, lit candles and showed, to, showed support to us in so many ways during the last seven days. To the emergency services, we are grateful for your respectful help when we needed it. To the staff of Port Leash Hospital for allowing us our private time with our mother. We will cherish that forever. To Waterford Hospital for facilitating Mam's post-mortem so that we could get her home, thank you. To Port Leash Parish and namely Father David, thank you for your guidance. To the Cahillan sisters for your beautiful contribution to today's music, along with our niece Katie. Katie, Granny and Grandad will be so proud of you. Finally, to the Wheelahan funeral directors, Thank you very much for helping us get through this difficult time. Your support was exactly what we needed to get through. Words cannot express our sincere appreciation for your extraordinary assistance throughout the week. We hope that people will take the time to, to, to join us for a cup of tea and some food in the hall. And we'll now take Mammy to her place of rest beside her two boys. Mammy, we love you. And thank you very much, Martina, for the beautiful tribute to your mother. And again, just add my own word of thanks to all of you for gathering here and all those who led us in our readings and our prayers to Maeve and Clodagh for the music and of course to Katie for the beautiful music as well. But also to Jamie, Julika, Elizabeth, Martina and Jolene for your beautiful song at the beginning of our celebration. I know your mother will be very proud to hear you all sing together. Again, just to extend our deepest sympathies to you all, to her sons-in-law, her daughter-in-law, to her grandchildren, to her childhood friend, Margaret, and to all her nieces, nephews, neighbours and friends, and all who are gathered here this day. Know that the prayers and support of this community are with you all during this time. And so I invite you to stand for our prayers of final commendation. <laughs> Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Mary Ellen, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see her again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of God's kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Monsignor John will now sprinkle Mary Ellen's coffin with holy water, reminding us of the promise she received on the day of her baptism the promise to eternal life. proceed to incense her coffin reminding us that as she lived Mary Ellen was a temple of the Holy Spirit and as the smoke rises to heaven it brings with it our prayers as we pray receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. 
receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Mary Ellen, your servant. In the sight of this world she is now dead. In your sight may she live forever. Forgive whatever sin she committed through human weakness, and in your goodness grant her everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mary Ellen, may the <coughs> angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. In peace, let us take our sister to her place of rest. 